Hello, I'm Tokat and welcome back to our second channel flying video. So if you're anything like me, while well, you've been in an airport, at some point some member of staff has asked you what flight number you're on and you've had to scramble around before finding this seemingly random list of letters and numbers that apparently work out where you're going. And if like me you get curious about these sorts of things, you might have wondered what exactly does this six digit sequence of characters actually mean and it does actually convey a surprising amount to anyone who is familiar, especially people who work in airports who don't know all the flight destinations but can work out a surprising amount from number. So let's dive straight into it by explaining the letters first of all, because these are the ones which can be obvious depending on your flight. If you fly with British Airways, for instance, you have BA at the start of every single flight number because every single British Airways flight, unless it's a code share, is going to start with BA before any of the numbers. If you fly with United Airlines, you're going to have UA before any of the numbers. And if you fly with Singapore Airlines, you're going to have SQ before any of those numbers. And because every single airline has one of these codes, if they want to fly internationally at least, uh, that means that every single airline has a flight number prefix, which means just those first two letters let people know which airline you're flying. And although some of these are quite counterintuitive, Ryanair's for instance is FR, uh, Norwegian for instance has D8 for their long haul operations and then DY for their short haul. Again, neither of those is very intuitive. Basically, the first two letters are there to let you know which airline you're flying. And if you work in an airport, you'll probably know all the codes of the airlines that fly into said airport. So what do the flight numbers mean after that? Because we've gone through the letters, but this is about flight numbers, right? So the flight numbers are surprisingly coordinated as well because legally there is uh, you know at the space between 1 and 9999 airlines can use whatever they want within that space however despite that fact there is actually a surprising amount of order a surprising amount of information that can be gained just from the number of your flight so yeah despite the fact that you can use any number from 1 to 999 it's general airline convention that you don't use numbers like 777 because these could otherwise be confused with the plane type if you're flying on you know UA777 but it's really a 787 you're flying you might get confused between the two of those numbers. So all of the plane numbers are generally uh, wiped off the list, as well as all of the numbers which have superstitious reasons behind them, like 666, for example. A lot of other kind of popular or joke numbers are often removed as well. So 420, for instance, isn't going to come up all the time. Although, interestingly enough, I looked into it for this. United UA420 actually flies from Denver, Colorado, the first state with legal weed, to Los Angeles International, and I just find that a funny little coincidence. So, so most easily confusable flight numbers are removed from the list, and then what can be worked out from the remaining numbers, because if you say you're on BA777, then they know you've made a mistake somewhere. Uh, but from the remaining flight numbers, the information that can be gathered is that the lower the number on your flight, the more prestigious it is generally considered to be for the airline. And uh, in case you're curious as to what that means, like what is a prestigious flight, there are some flights which are considered more important by airlines than others. There are a lot of flights where, you know, this is a key part of their flagship product. For instance, when British Airways offered a Concorde flight from London to New York, this was one of their biggest flights. So they assigned it the very prestigious flight tag BA1. Of all of the hundreds of flights that BA offers, this supersonic flight, which operated between the two biggest English-speaking cities in the world, was of course one of their most prestigious. Any of the big businessmen in New York or London would love to take BA1 because it was the fastest, as well as, you know, in a lot of other ways, best service between the two big cities. So yeah, that is the reason why low flight numbers mean big prestigious route, whereas much higher flight numbers indicate the opposite. So for instance, I fly a lot between London and Frankfurt. This is a big route for BA. They operate a lot of air flights on this route but they're not operating a lot of big flights because it's a big international service. It's just to ferry business people back and forth between their hub in London Heathrow or London City and the hub of one of their biggest rivals, Lufthansa. It's an hour flight, so it's not like it's uh, famed for its service or anything. It's, uh, you know, mostly a flight where you take off, you land, uh, there's nothing amazing about it. They make some money on the route, but again, it's not one of their famous routes. It's, it's rather just a connecting flight that people take if they're connecting in Frankfurt or if they're connecting in London. So because of that, the flights that I end up taking on this route fairly often because I fly between between the two cities a lot have pretty absurd flight numbers. For instance, I take BA8733, uh, 8,733. You know, that number's not so high because they have 8,732 other flights. That number is really high because it is a rival's hub. It's a short flight. And because it's actually operated by a subsidiary of British Airways, BA City Flyer. So yeah, now you know, low flight means really important to the airline and a high flight number means that it's probably the opposite. Another thing you can also work out with flight numbers is that if you're taking, say, uh, BA8733, from Frankfurt to London, the reverse of that flight or London City to Frankfurt is going to be called 8734 because generally flights are paired. There's a flight out to somewhere and then there is a flight back because of the hub and spoke model often used by major airlines. So now that you know exactly what your flight number means, it's two letters to let the airline employees know which airline you're flying. And then it's a bunch of numbers to let you know how important that route is. Because again, BA1 or QF1 or SQ1 are going to be very important flights to their respective airlines. But then the question becomes, so which flight 
flights are important to which airlines. And this is kind of the genesis of this video. I wanted to talk about which airlines find which flights to be their most important ones. Because again, I was recently looking at flights, uh, if you're curious, from London to Singapore, and I found out that the flight operated on that route was called QF2. This is because it was the return of QF1, which operates from Sydney to London via Singapore on the way. And the return, of course, would be London to Singapore to Sydney. And the reason this got their QF1 tag is because, of course, for Qantas, an Australian airline, flying to London is going to be one of their biggest destinations and one of their most popular destinations with people who are, uh, you know, either Australians with strong family ties in London or just flying back to London because that's where they currently live. It's a very popular route. It's one of the routes in the world which is actually driving some of the biggest demand for long, ultra long haul flights because there is the dream of one day having a direct Sydney to London flight. That's a whole other story though, but that's QF1. If you look up American Airlines flight, AA1, you'll find out that their most prized flight is their New York to Los Angeles one. This is because they do the most popular transcontinental service. Uh, they want people when they're flying all the way across this, uh, the country to fly American Airlines. They have, I believe, the only true first class product on this route. I'll show you on screen now what it looks like. It's very impressive for a plane flying on a domestic route. And it's very popular with Hollywood stars for that reason and also big businessmen who are willing to pay any price to fly across the country comfortably. So then after looking up American Airlines, I was like, well, what's my favorite American airline that flies internationally? It's gotta be Delta, I think. So I looked up DL1 and DL1 is actually their JFK to London Heathrow service because uh, London was their first international destination. And of course, it's one of the most important because again, London, second biggest English speaking city in the world, arguably the first, depending on which metrics you use. But again, it's uh, you know linking the two biggest English speaking cities in the world. Very popular, very busy and very prestigious flight route. So it gets the Delta DL1 name tag attached. Interestingly, a lot of airlines actually use their one flight number to fly to London. So for instance, if we look up Emirates, which is one of the more famous airlines in the world, their EK1 flight is from Dubai to London. Fun fact here, but they also use EK3, EK5, EK7, EK9, EK11, EK15, EK17, EK19, EK29, EK31, and EK33 because it is that important to them. It's also worth noting that EK2, EK4, etc. All of the plus one to those flight numbers are the return flights. So there's a lot of Dubai to London traffic just from this one airline. And there's a similar amount of traffic from Qatar Airways to uh, from Doha to London on this exact same thing with QR1, QR3. Actually, you know what? I think you get the point by now. I think you understand there's a lot of flights and they're all very low numbered, but this is Qatar Airways, Doha to London service. Interestingly enough, the third biggest uh, Middle Eastern airline, Etihad Airways, uses their EY1 num flight number to fly to Frankfurt instead. So I guess they don't find London as important. Sucks to be you, Etihad. Screw you. There's a reason you're having so many financial difficulties. Show that on screen right now. Look at that. Yeah, that's 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 what you get for valuing Frankfurt over London. Am I right? No, but more seriously, these flight numbers are kind of interesting to look up on any airline, and it makes you realize just how important or not so that your flight might be to the airline. Not to say that there are flights that are less important or more expendable, but to say that there are some flights which are considered much more, you know, operationally important for the reputation of the airline and for the business of it, rather than just being a leisure flight to a leisure destination or being, a, again, connecting to another competitor's hub. Uh, interesting enough, while I was looking this up, I found out that LH1 was from Frankfurt to Hamburg, a route which is dying in popularity every year because more people take the train each time and also it's a domestic hour-long flight. Air France doesn't have an AF1. Their flight numbers start at 10 for some reason, so they use AF10 for their Paris Charles de Gaulle Airport to New York JFK, again, Paris to uh, New York, also very prestigious, uh, you know, flight right there. And just the most interesting one on this list to me is BA1, because like I said earlier in the video, BA1 used to be used for the Concorde service from London to JFK. It was the fastest way to fly between the two city pairs. They could charge thousands of dollars, even though the seats look like this, fun fact, by the way, uh, they actually look kind of uncomfortable, right? They could charge thousands of dollars for it because it was their prestigious, uh, super fast service that if you needed to be there fast, you know, you could travel back in time with the service effectively, you would take this service. So BA1, when uh, Concorde was retired, Retired, was retired alongside it until a recent attempt at a replacement was made. So around 10 years ago now, BA1 was reassigned to the brand new flight from London City Airport to New York's JFK. The thing that makes this so significant, the fact that it's flying an Airbus A318 aircraft. It's one that is modified to be in an all business class configuration and it looks like this on the inside, much nicer actually than the Concorde. But the point is, it's a very small plane, one of the smallest that ever crosses the Atlantic on a regular basis. And the flight is also significant because it stops in Shannon Airport in uh, Ireland to actually allow you to pass US immigration before entering the US. And uh, it's interesting for a bunch of different reasons, but the fact that this very strange business class only all bed flight uh, from you know like London uh, city center to New York's JFK has lived on through the form of a very different, but kind of comparable to Concorde service is kind of fascinating to me because again, Concorde was an all business service, even though it looked very different, it was the service for business people to save the time. And now this is the equivalent. If you live in the heart of London and you don't want to 
travel out to the further out airports. If you want to, uh, you know, enter the US before entering the US, if you want this very private, this very comfortable service, it's a thing you can do from London to New York. However, if you look up flight prices, I'll show them on screen right now, it's something that's kind of a prohibitive thing for most non-companies, but that's why one of the dreams is to find some decent points availability that doesn't cost an absurd amount, or to find a decent deal using one of the things I mentioned in my book, like, oh yeah, if you fly from some weird city via London City, you can sometimes, uh, you know, save costs that way. It's one of the things that I look into on a regular basis, and if you see on this channel that I ever, you know, managed to take the BA1 uh, service from London City to New York on an A318, again, such a tiny plane across the Atlantic, then I guess you'll know that I've reached my flying version of whatever a real dream is meant to be. So yeah, with that said, I hope you all did enjoy this video. You can do things to it if you want to. You can not do things if you like leaving videos alone, and you can subscribe if you want to see more of these videos that seem to change topic every time you upload. You know what? That's fine. That's half the fun in my opinion. So yeah, thank you very much for watching, because I'll see you all next time, or never. Uh, second channel, don't care. Bye.